When it comes to inventory, obviously you're tracking assets. So what that means is, okay, do I serialize top subs? Do I serialize rotors and stators? Do I serialize crossover subs? Do I serialize my computers? So depending on what you serialize, we can actually adjust Drakewell to track just those items. So think of basically assets are things that are serialized. And if I could spell. Things that usually you own, don't necessarily have to own, but you want to serialize them, you want to track them, you want to track when they leave your shop, when you want to track when they get repaired, you want to track when they come from a vendor that you're renting it from and track that shipment out to the job. Those are assets and things you want to track. So we can actually configure that. So what are the assets you want to track? What rig items are is they're very similar to assets in the fact that they're still like a motor, they're still a crossover sub, they're still top sub, all that kind of stuff you want to track for items you put on a BHA. The main difference is, is while well, assets are serialized, so you enter in a serial number, you can only ever enter this one serial number for this asset in Drake will ever. Rig items, you enter a serial number if you want to, but we don't track them outside the job. So they only live within the job slash BHA. Whereas a serialized asset, they live in all of Drakewell. So all of the system knows about your assets that you serialize, only the job BHA knows about rig items. So, and again, we'll dig into that a little bit more further down the road. But then one other thing, so with assets, obviously depending on what level of detail you wanna go into, so what we can do is with an asset, as a motor is a good example. So you create a motor in Drakewell. So we create a thing called the work order and we can configure it to a level of how deep you want to track things. So for a motor, do you want to track, you know, just uh, a serial number and a manufacturer vendor, or even maybe a crossover sub is probably a better example. So something you're not going to assemble. So a crossover sub, when I create a crossover sub, I want to track its serial number, its vendor, its manufacturer, uh, where it's currently at, where it's home base, you know, is it based out of my Midland district. It's based out of my Conroe district. So where's kind of home base? And then also, where's it located? And then we can also track things like uh, its size. So what is its OD? And then we can jump into, you know, okay, a crossover sub. It's going to have two different connections, a top and bottom connection. You might have a 2 and 7 8 uh, reg pin and a 2 and 7 8 IF box. So you can actually track the different connection types and things like that. And that all can be configured when setting up an asset. And then, so another example maybe is a motor. Now a motor is an assembled thing built up of other components. And so we can actually get into, you know, the workflows, which you may be familiar with. And what workflows are is just what happens to the assets. So motors get initialized, they get assembled. When they get shipped to a job, they get strapped. When they come back from a job going down hole, they get disassembled and inspected. That's all part of that workflow process, and that can all be configured as well. But we'll dive into all that at a later date.